Now let's spend a little more time talking about migraine headaches. Migraine headaches, like I said earlier, the most common headache syndrome in children. There's two real broad categories of migraine headaches. There's classic migraines, where there's a visual aura beforehand, and then common migraines, also known as sick headaches, which have the typical sort of migraine headaches without the preceding aura. I always found it interesting that classic migraines are less common than common migraines, accounting for about 30% of childhood migraines. Common migraines, remember these are the migraines without having the aura or the visual changes beforehand, account for about 70% of migraine headaches. Now the International Classification for Headache Disorder Criteria for Migraine, and in, in, in this part of the presentation I'll differentiate a little bit between uh, tension headaches, but the International Classification for Headache Disorders gives some diagnostic criteria for migraines. Migraine headaches are recurrent, and so having more than five attacks is part of the diagnostic criteria for migraines, lasting anywhere between four and 72 hours in adults. This is different from tension headaches, which can last anywhere between 30 minutes to as long as seven days. Having two or more of the following features. Now again, these are adult diagnostic criteria, and I'll talk about how it differs from children. But that's a unilateral onset, um, usually in the parietal area, and having a pulsating sort of quality to them with moderate to severe intensity and aggravated by exercise. This is different from tension headaches, if you remember. Tension headaches tend to be bilateral or having that sort of hat band onset, being squeezing rather than throbbing, mild or moderate intensity, and not exacerbated or worsened by exercise. Another characteristic of migraine headaches is having either nausea and vomiting or sensitivity to light or sound. And then no evidence on examination of anything causing the headaches, any sort of uh, worrisome signs for secondary headaches. Now there's a few changes between the diagnostic criteria for headaches in adults and headaches in children. This international classification of headache disorders has a few caveats or special notes for children. The first is that in children, migraine headaches can be shorter. So the diagnostic criteria changed a little bit, somewhere between one and 72 hours, although headaches less than two hours are relatively uncommon. In children, headaches tend to be bilateral onset, usually involving bilateral frontal areas rather than in adults where you might see unilateral or one-sided parietal onset of the headaches. And then finally, in children, they may not always complain of photophobia or sensitivity to light, but you might infer it or figure it out by their sorts of behaviors. So one thing is, if, uh, families will come in and they'll say, you know, whenever my child has a headache, all they want to do is climb under the, under the covers and close the door in their bedroom. So that's a way to infer that they're looking for a quiet, dark room. I'll often ask that question specifically. Do they get relief from being in a quiet, dark room to figure if there's this photophobia, sensitivity to light, or sound sensitivity? So taking the International Classification of Headache Disorder Diagnostic Criteria for Adults and modifying it with the special notes for children, I've included as a slide in your study guide this can be at least five headaches, duration lasting somewhere between one and 72 hours, having two of the following features, bifrontal or parietal temporal onset, pulsating or throbbing, moderate to severe intensity, aggravated by exercise, and one of the following, which may be inferred by behavior, nausea or vomiting, and then sensitivity to light or sound. Now another interesting thing about childhood headaches is that they tend to be recurrent. And where this causes problems is with the first ever migraine. If a child comes in with a first sudden severe headache, I might think it's a migraine headache. It might be their first ever migraine. But it's much more reassuring if I have a family who comes in and says, they've had these episodic headaches for the past two or three years. Uh, they have them every couple of, couple of months, but they're very debilitating. That's more reassuring that these are just migraines and less worrisome for something like a secondary sort of headache. Now there's different phases to migraine headaches that migraineurs will report. The first is a prodrome. This is a feeling of a headache coming on. The aura, or what it feels like right before the headache. The headache itself, and then the postdrome. So starting off with the prodrome, this occurs in about half of people. These are nonspecific symptoms. People will wake up in the morning, they just don't feel right. They just know something's wrong. They can't describe it. Maybe an altered mood. 
fatigue, sometimes yawning, craving certain foods, maybe feeling like a cold's coming on. It's these sort of nonspecific symptoms that people get before their migraines. The next phase is the aura. Now the aura is very interesting. Remember, it's only part of uh, classic migraines, so only is present in about 30% of uh, migraineurs will have auras before their headaches, classic migraines. Remember, as opposed to common migraines, which accounts for about 70% of migraines. These are focal neurologic symptoms that happen somewhere between five and 60 minutes before a headache comes on. It's usually vision changes. Now for migraines, I'll take almost any sort of symptom um, visually for being a migraine aura. The most common things are like zigzag lines, um, vision loss, maybe even a certain visual field, maybe the right-sided visual field of both eyes, uh, blurred spots, uh, floaters, sometimes losing vision from the outside in is less, less common. And then very unusual or uncommon, maybe even makes me think of something else, is if a person's complaining of very brightly colored hallucinations or visual disturbances. But almost any sort of visual change can be a migraine aura five to 60 minutes before the headache comes on. Then there's the headache itself. Again, uh, frontal, so the front of the head, more commonly bilateral in children, more commonly unilateral or on the side in adults, and the associated symptoms that go along with it, the nausea, vomiting, sensitivity to light and sound, lightheadedness, dizziness being an important part of the headache itself, and duration somewhere between one and 72 hours. Now what many migraineurs will say is, you know, I don't care about the headache itself. That's all short. Maybe it's only lasts two, three hours. The worst part of my migraine is what's called the postrome, the last phase of the headache. And that's this washed out feeling that people will have for several hours, maybe even several days after a headache. These are nonspecific symptoms. Uh, sometimes you'll describe it as ADHD-like, difficulty concentrating, mood changes, being irritable, weak, fatigue, sleepiness, nonspecific symptoms that once the migraine is gone, um, persist for many hours or days afterwards. Now, interestingly, after a migraine, some people will actually have just the opposite. They'll have this vigor, this renewed energy, um, and rather than a, a washed out feeling post will actually feel better once the migraine has resolved. So what causes the migraine? What's the underlying problem related to migraines? This is not well understood, but the underlying problem usually probably has something to do with the blood vessels in, in, in the brain. What initiates the whole process of these changes in the, the, the size of the blood vessels isn't well known. Maybe something like a wave of spreading depression starting in the occipital area and moving, moving forward, causing some sort of narrowing of the blood vessels. It's thought that during this vasoconstriction or the narrowing part of the blood vessels, that's when people get their auras the visual changes that, that happen. Then there's this compensatory um, um, vasodilation or expansion of the blood vessels. Um, sometimes I'll explain it to families as, as, as the brain not having enough blood and, and, and this process starting releasing things like vasoactive peptides and cause expansion of, of the blood vessels. And that's when you get the throbbing, the real migraine part of the headache with the associated uh, nausea. And that washed out feeling, or the post is as the blood vessel contractility is getting back down to normal. Now the reason this is important is that some of the medications that we prescribe for migraines work on this underlying vascular problem. For example, the triptan medications help regulate the contractility of, of the blood vessels. 